Hello, listeners. Welcome to Positive Awareness Podcast. My name is Corey Earl, and I live in Carton Place, Ontario, outside of Ottawa. I'm also a self-advocate and a president of a national organization called People First. And uh, so it's great to be here. Uh, and I'm also joined by Michael and Kara. Uh, Michael, can you explain uh, who you are? I'm Mike McClellan. I'm one of the founders of the Self-Advocate Leadership Network and a um, board member of BC People First, as well as past president of BC People First and on many other boards like Conclusion BC. That, that's great. And, uh, and thank you, Michael, for that. Uh, such important boards. Um, and also, Kara, can you also talk to us uh, about who you are as well? Yeah, my name is Kara Anderson. I live in Nanaimo, BC. I'm also a member of the Self Advocate Leadership Network. Um, I'm also a mom of a 20 year old who also has a diverse ability. Wow. Well, thank you for that. And uh, so let's get right into it because, um, as we all know, um, we're dealing with uh, COVID 19 here and uh, we want to share some. Uh, some also stuff and some of the experiences as well. And one of the biggest that's been on people's minds is supports. And uh, so, uh, Michael, I know if you could talk about um, your personal story around that, uh, because so many people who rely on supports, they um, may, may not necessarily have those kind of supports, but it's, yeah, it's really important. Um, can you just talk briefly about that? One of the things I'm going to say is supports are important. Um, supports in many different ways especially if someone goes in the hospital and they need those supports if you need somebody in there to communicate for you if you need somebody in there to make decisions for you and make sure they're there because what if a person cannot communicate that type of stuff, that type of um, support is necessary and necessary in many ways, especially if you need that help with decision making and making sure it is there. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for, for that, Michael. And Michael, can you just uh, talk about that if if a person doesn't have the support, how how critical it is. You talked a little bit about that, but if, um, if that person doesn't necessarily have that uh, support, the impact it has on that person's life. It's a major impact because it makes it more difficult for them without that help and that person that they actually trust not there. It, how do you know you're going to trust that person that you don't know that is could be a medical professional you don't know them especially if you can't communicate do you need that support so uh, trust is so important right and oftentimes that's what we relied on is this uh, someone that we can trust to be able to provide that support uh you know it's a uh, it's a uh coincidence that we're chatting about support say because my twin brother um who I mean, I must say, um, I, I bet you by the time we're done this call, he's probably called me about 10 times because he calls me four times a day. Um, <laughs> and, um, and and I will say that one of the biggest um, things that we did as a family is we wanted to, he had to go to the hospital. Um, <clears throat> and even though he has a, a support person, um, he really wanted me to come because it's someone that he's trusted uh, in his life to be able to deal with the medical aspect. So um, we had everything. We worked with the nurse uh, reception. We worked with the doctor's office and we were prepared. Um, so we got all prepared about going to support him. I took the time off just to um, be able to go with him to the, uh, to the hospital. And um, so going through the whole preparation um, because the anxiety was pretty high, um, he wanted me to go. So we did and we planned all that. We got to the hospital. We were warned that you, you know, that he would be able to have a mask and gloves just because of his um, his uh, vulnerability in terms of him catching anything. And uh, so we got in there and we were stopped and we were prepared. We were prepared to go through the whole screening process because um, that's certainly important as well. And uh, so we went through that and the woman stopped us at the door and she said, first question she said to him is, 
are you two together? And he said, well, yeah. And she said, well, does he need to be with you? And my twin brothers, Kyle's like, well, yes, I, I want him to support me. And then she turned around and she goes, well, do you need him to support you? And then he answered again. And then she asked him a third time and said, are you sure you need him to come in and support you? My twin looked at me at that moment, um, uh, was, was scared because he didn't, because if he was afraid if he turned around and said no one more time that he'd get in trouble. Um, so my twin looked at me and then she goes, well, you know, we could do it for you. We can walk you around. And my twin looked at me and went, it's, you know, it's entirely up to you. And he went, well, no, I guess I could do it all by myself. Um, that took about four or five times before he, um, before he caved in. And I and then she looked at me and she said, "Okay, sir, now you can leave the building." Um, <clears throat> and my twin um, came back out after, and he was apologetic because he actually thought it was his fault. He thought he did something wrong, and uh, and to me that really impacted. And and I had stories about that the um, the week before that, and I didn't realize that um, first of all when it really hits home, when it really hits you trying to do something, um, you certainly do know the impact. So support's really supports are really critical and I think it's really important for people to recognize that when you have supports you should be able to bring in that support person someone that you trust to have that you've had in your life or that may be able to help you to advocate um, for that my twin he may very well have been independent but he needs someone to be able to turn around and help with the questions that were being asked and um, and I think that's really important so I, I share that story because it just happened um, week or so ago and um and he's we are going to write a letter to the hospital because my twins remind me every day that um that he is really he doesn't want the whole issue to die down it ain't good for him for being on me on that but it just shows and and i say that um it's really important that leads us to a next question that i have um for kara because kara thought she was probably going to get other questions but she's wrong we'll that her have a question. Um, Kara, you had talked to me, um, you had talked about uh, representation uh, agreements, and I must say, um, that's the first time I've heard about uh, representation agreements. Um, so I'd be curious if you can uh, talk more uh, for the listeners and the people that may not know uh, what um, representation uh, agreements are. Okay, representation agreements are something very specific to the province of BC where I live but there are also other forms of them in other provinces. But for the province of BC, a representation agreement is um, a legal binding document that um, states that you, um, it basically it's around healthcare. So it says, so you have a, you have two you have two representatives so these are people who have to know you very very well but also they are not allowed to be paid support um and then you have somebody who is a monitor who just makes sure that the represent the representatives are following your wishes your guidelines etc cetera, etc cetera. so what that representation does for somebody is they're go when they go into a hospital is give them that voice around communication um, decision decision make decision making and that's also just a comfort to have somebody um, who knows you very very well to be there to support you because hospitals could be pretty big scary places I know for myself if I could avoid them like the plague I do um for me though I don't have a res representation agreement I have only lived in BC for the last 11 years I I'm an Alberta girl, pretty much born and raised. Um, so I have something what they call a personal directive, very, very similar. It's around my health care. So if I need support with um, decision making or just having somebody in the hospital with me, if it's an emergency or even if it's not an emergency, if I go in for tests or whatever, I'm allowed to have that person there is support so that's kind of and in BC they are legal binding documents so yeah so it's basically it's it's just a way that if 
you're unable to communicate for yourself, it kind of gives you that voice, right? If that makes sense to everybody. Uh, absolutely. No, that's great. Um, and, and it's such a really great document. Um, and uh, Karen must have been reading my notes because my next question was about whether it's a legal uh, binding. And because uh, I think that's really important. It's important that when you have a documentation, um, A, if it's legal, because if it's legal, it means that the, the, everything that's in there is agreed upon and that can be challenged by that can be challenged by law, right? So compared to having a document that may have just been signed, but necessarily you may have a hard time trying to fight with the arguments in the court of law. We actually have something called the Representation Act in the, in the province of BC and it is legislation that is written into law that's into law in this province. So no, that 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 that's great, and, and hopefully others will take the lead on that if they've not already started on that. Um, and uh, the other things we learned, Corey, is that the personal directive compared to the rep agreement, it doesn't personal directive doesn't move from province to province. Uh, that's not true, Michael. I got a I I just because mine was done in another province. BC will recognize my personal directive. I just have to have like a note saying that this was done under by a lawyer was all done above board and they will recognize that that documentation in this province because I thought I was going to have to redo my stuff, but no, I don't have to. I don't have to redo my stuff, which is kind of kind of nice. <laughs> I didn't know you had found that out. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, no, I thought I told you. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so can you talk about the uh, Aries Knight? Um, Aries Knight was a young lady who had a developmental disability and communicated in non-traditional ways. Um, she was, she died in hospital alone due to the restrictions of COVID-19. So right now we are advocating to have policies changed in the healthcare system to show that people have need 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 support and this is a, so this tragedy does not happen again. Supports around her were needed to be there. Um, that piece is so important and it is one piece that I'd say some a family member, a support worker should have been there and helping make her make decisions. There should have been somebody in that hospital helping with that. It shouldn't have been no one. How are they going to make a decision? That's a really tough choice. It's uh, such an important uh, case that has uh, that certainly has brought some light and, and hopefully um, that there are some changes um, down the road, right? But um, yeah, thank, thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's really important and uh, certainly um, Aries Knight, uh, people can read all about, about that as well. Sorry for the interruption. Good morning, everybody. This is something everyone needs to know about. There, we have an open letter that has gone to our provincial public health officer and our provincial health minister. And also we're doing it as an open letter. We're asking everybody to go to includeme.ca to sign on. And then it will go to all provincial health ministers across Canada and also the federal health minister. Thank you and have a good day. Sure, Michael, do you guys have just any final comments just in terms of supports? I, again, um, it's really important that when people um, do have supports that you can bring the support with you um, and, um, and to the hospital or uh, even not necessarily to the hospital, but also if you have appointments with your doctors or, or physicians or um, health workers and stuff like that, right? That you can bring them in by Zoom, that you can bring them in by different technology that people are using now. Um, it's really, really important for people to do. Um, do you guys have any final comments just around that? Uh, we learned in terms of the Ares Night issue, we learned about those uh, representational uh, agreements. For me, I know the Ares Night, and also just one thing, Corey, that we should say, she, um, was not, she did not die from COVID-19. She was in hospital for other health issues. 
because she was tested for COVID-19 and those tests that test came back negative. So she, but because of COVID-19 and all the hospital restrictions, that basically she was left left on her own, which I mean, I know if I couldn't communicate, to me it would be a very, very scary place to be all by myself right now. And also that's why we have to, we have to push. I mean, I know for my son, if somebody told me that I was in a little lot in the hospital, they would have to, they would um, have a big fight on their hands, let's just put it, that they would have to drag me out of there kicking and screaming. Uh, well, I couldn't imagine going against you, Kara. Um, and um, I do want to say and thank you for that, uh, the Ares Night, because the COVID that's going around right now. So I think, um, first of all, I think that the supports, as we've talked about, are really critical for people uh, to have and for you to bring your support, whether it's to a hospital or uh, visits that people are doing by Zoom right now for your medical, mental health, et cetera, to really have that person there to be able to help you and provide that support. Um, I want to really, really thank everyone for listening today. This has really been such a very important conversation, a conversation that will continue on um, and it will continue on right after COVID-19 because I think there's a lot of things that we could do to ensure that uh, the people have those supports uh, in, the, in the years ahead and that we actually fund them as well. Um, so I also want to, uh, there's so many thank yous I want to give. Uh, first, I want to give uh, Michael and Kara, thank you so much for sharing your stories uh, and um, your experience as well. It's been really important. And thank you listeners for joining us today. This podcast um, couldn't happen without the support of Stuff Advocate Leadership Network. Semiamu, as well as Self Advocates of Nanaimo. BC People First, empowering self-advocates to take action. Self-Advocates Net, Chair of Self-Advocate Committee Inclusion BC. We thank you.